Who was the worst conquistador? Francisco Pizarro destroyed the Inca when he kidnapped their leader Atahuapa, held him for a ransom, and once paid, killed him anyway. Hey, I thought we were good now. I even converted to Christianity. Oh, good thing too. You should see how we're executing the other guys. <laughs> Nuno Beltran de Guzman, also known as Bloody Guzman, was so brutal to the native people of Mexico that he was basically brought up on war crimes. Do you know how messed up of a conquistador you have to be for that to happen? But isn't this what conquistadors were? They were Spanish conquerors of the New World. So who was the worst at it? Who was the worst Española explorer, most incompetent conquistadora? Meet Panfilio de Narvaez. Europe in the 15th century was going through massive changes. The population was finally rebounding from the Black Death, the Renaissance was just taking shape, and the Byzantine Empire was about to fall. <sighs> Another day of keeping the Ottomans at bay. Yep, this Eastern Roman Empire has stood for a thousand years and will stand for a thousand more. <sighs> Did I remember to lock the gate? I guess not. The loss of the Byzantine Empire led to the trade between Europe and Asia grinding to a halt, as the Muslim Ottoman Empire was hesitant to allow European traders through. Come on, guys, we've been using this trade route for centuries now. What do you have against us? Oh yeah, that old thing. Which meant that Asian goods that had been imported were now prohibitively expensive. Goods like silk and porcelain and spices. Which may not seem like a big deal until you consider traditional European cuisine. Honey, this tastes like a foot that's been boiled in swamp water. And? And it's perfect. Chef's kiss. <laughs> European kingdoms soon sought alternative trade routes to Asia. Such as Portugal, which was spurred on by Prince Henry the Navigator, and his lesser known brother, Prince Charlie, the backseat driver. Ah, uh, you're going too fast, and would it kill you to use a turn signal? Pull over. I have to pay. This led to Portugal trying to reach Asia by sailing south around Africa. Meanwhile, in the 1480s, King John II of Portugal was approached by a Genoese sailor who had a different strategy. I'll sail west. Christopher Columbus, are you crazy? That'll never work. Why? Because you think I'll sail off the edge of a flat earth? Newsflash, the earth is round! No, duh. We've known that for almost 2,000 years. This is crazy because the map you're using by Toscanelli is garbage. You've underestimated the circumference of the earth because you didn't convert Arabic miles to Roman miles. And did you forget that Portuguese mariners are already trying to sail around Africa? You mean Bartolomeu Diaz's expedition? He's been gone for two years! Probably at the bottom of the briny deep, if you ask me. I'm back, and I've successfully rounded the southern tip of Africa! God damn it, Diaz. You got the timing of a shark. Luckily, Portugal's Iberian neighbor of Spain, united by King Ferdinand of Aragon and Queen Isabella of Castile, were more willing to take a shot on the Italian mariner. Captain Columbus, as you know, we have completed the Reconquista and driven the Moors out of Spain. And as loco pantalones as your plan is, we are ready to support it, mostly on the chance of establishing our own trade route to Asia, and a little bit to shut up King John of Portugal. That cabron talks more about Asia than Euro trash coming back from Gap Year. Also, you can bring Christianity to all the heathens you encounter while we kick the Spanish Inquisition into high gear and crush the Jews, Muslims, and heretics that refuse the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, that doesn't sound very Christian to me. Who let this Jewish guy in here? So in 1492, Columbus was off. Him and everyone on his expedition should have died, but there just happened to be two undiscovered continents in the way. That is, undiscovered by people other than the 60 million already living there. Still, Columbus thought he had reached Japan, which was then known as... Sapangu? Huh? This is Sapangu, the island off the coast of Asia. Yes or no? No Sapangu. No? Well, is that Sapangu? No, that Topanga. Whatever. Come on, boys, we've reached Asia! Oh, and you're Spanish and Christian now. Over the next decade, Columbus and other Spanish explorers would flock to what they believed was Asia, which in 1498 included a young man named Panfilo de Narvaez. How do you do, Captain Columbo? 
<laughs> Look around, kid. I'm Admiral of the frickin' Ocean Sea. And what brings you here? Well, I guess I've been identified as a young man of great potential, selected by the crown itself to conquer this strange and exotic land. Plus, it doesn't hurt that the kid's got more connections than Ma Bell. Ah, Juan de Esquival. I haven't seen you since you were part of my second expedition. Is young Panfilio under your charge? Yeah, he's gonna be my bailiff. I'll show him the ropes of Conquistador and, and hopefully how not to get killed. Well, Banfilio, you've come to the right place. There's no better land to make your fortune and glory than here in Asia. Too bad it's not Asia. Ugh, Vespucci, not this again. I'm telling you, this isn't Asia. It's two completely new continents. <laughs> yeah, right. Two new continents nobody ever knew about. Next thing you're gonna tell me, there's two more that have yet to be discovered. <laughs> Just remember the name of the person that told you so. Ain't nobody gonna remember your name, Amerigo. I mean, seriously. How could there be continents out there hidden and secured from everyone? Well, I know a way. Really? How? They could use Surfshark VPN. Ha ha ha. Very funny, guys. The old sponsor fake out bit again. Oh, you even downloaded a logo this time. Dude, this is real. This channel landed a sponsor. Ah! We gotta get everybody in on this! Governor, quit your humping! We got a sponsor! Caesar, great news! We're making Caesar part two? No, we got a sponsor! Who's even bigger than these guys? God, you gotta come! Who dares to save the Lord? We got a sponsor! Holy sh! For real? Surfshark is a VPN, a virtual private network app and extension that keeps you and your data safe online. It encrypts your information, making sure that any snoopers won't be able to see what you're doing or where you're doing it from. Yeah, but can I just use incognito mode? Incognito mode? Are you kidding me? Look at that icon. What do you think? You think that's a spy? No, that guy's a pervert. You gonna trust your internet security to a pervert? And my favorite part of Surfshark is the ability to virtually relocate yourself around the world to access region-locked streaming catalogs on services like Netflix by accessing one of their 3,000 plus servers in over 100 countries. In an instant, you can virtually transport yourself to Siam. Wait, I'm um, being told Siam isn't a country anymore. Uh, Czechoslovakia? That one's not a country anymore either? Okay, uh, Taiwan? Oh, I'm being told that one was never a country to begin with. And with just one Surfshark account, you can protect unlimited devices. Window and Mac devices, iOS and Android, your smart TV, your router. Will it work on him? Your goat? Yeah, I don't want anybody knowing how I use my goat. Gross. Please leave. Okay, so bottom line is that you should totally get Surfshark VPN and enter the promo code Drawn of History to get an extra three months free. Surfshark is a fantastic way to keep yourself safe online, and using them is a great way to support the channel. John, what is this? I heard we got a sponsor. I'm the Surfshark. <sighs> now. Back to the video. Over the next two decades, Panfillo would learn the ins and outs of being a conquistador. First, in places like Jamaica and Hispaniola with Escaval. Okay, Panfillo, let's do this again. We were able to defeat these people because of, uh... Uh, horses? No, Spanish steel. Wait, wait, gunpowder weapon? No, I got it. Crippling diseases that they have no resiliency against and can travel even faster than we do. Superior culture and religion. <sighs> let's try another one. Now that the native people have stopped revolting over the fact that we killed one of their chiefs, we work to make a peaceful, cohesive society? Bonfilio! Sorry, Escaval, I forgot. Enslave most and massacre the rest. My mistake. It's okay. It's only a mistake if you don't learn from it. In 1511, he assisted his relative, Governor Diego Velasquez, in conquering Cuba. I'm doing it! I'm doing it! I'm conquistadoring! I see, I see. You're a real bastard out there. Hey, Bartolome de la Casas. How does your honor like what these are Spaniards have done? That I command you and them to the death! 
devil! Oh, what sort of animal are we? How can we do this to our Indian brothers? The slaughter, the bondage, are they not men worthy of the same respect? Oh, I will write to the king of Spain and petition for the abolishment of the enslavement of the Indians. Whoa, La Casas, for living 500 years ago, that's incredibly progressive. And instead? Wait, what? And instead? There doesn't need to be an instead. End of sentence, full stop. Instead, I'll advocate for the use of African slaves here in the Americas. You know, you had it. You were doing so well and then you drove the car right off the cliff. If this is where the story of Panfilio de Narvaez ended, he would have been like a multitude of other conquistadors. Brutal, vile, but in context, unnoteworthy. But Narvaez's fate would soon be intertwined with a young officer that had served under him named Hernan Cortez. Why is it that you wish to go off to this island of Cozumel? As an emissary of you, of course, Governor Velasquez, to establish trade relations for vital supplies, such as Indians to work the mines. And if any gold is discovered, you would receive your fair share, of course. Of course, but I must say, Cortez, you have time and time again proven to be a man of dangerous ambition. How can I trust that you will remember that you answer to me? Oh, Velasquez, a lesser man might be insulted by this lack of faith. Really? Then why are your men loading t-shirts with little Cortez Calvins peeing on my name? Well, you know how they send the shirts of the Super Bowl loser to Africa? It's kind of like that. Listen, Governor, you have nothing to worry about. The expedition I am about to embark on, I do solely in your name and authority. Welcome to Cortesistan. I'm the Governor now. Hello, native people. I assure you we come in peace. Now. Clear that disgusting viscera off that temple so we may have mass like civilized men and consume the body and blood of the Lord! Sir, it appears that Captain Cortez has disavowed all allegiance to you and placed himself as the governor of the mainland. Of course he has. So, um, what are you gonna do? <sighs> Get me, Panfilo. At first, I thought they handed me the wrong dossier. I couldn't believe they wanted this man arrested. He was traditional, Italian, and included endless salad and breadsticks. And then I realized I had the wrong dossier. It was actually an Olive Garden menu, but the one on Cortez was interesting too. It seemed that no matter what he had come across, he had found a way to handle it. And we shall call this settlement Villa Rica de la Veracruz, and I shall be the governor. Cortez, despite what you say, we insist that this expedition is still under the authority of Governor Velazquez. What you're doing is treasonous and illegal, and we must go back to Cuba. I understand. I encourage such loyalty. How about you take a brief excursion into the jungle for provisions while I ready your ships? Uh, yeah, that would be quite helpful. Hey, thanks for being so cool about this. No problemo. Sink those f***ing ships. Let those cupolos swim home while the rest of us get rich. Hey, uh, do those floating temples belong to you? Why, yes. And who might you be? I'm Zamakoto, Kashyyyk of the Totonac. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that those uh, things didn't belong to Moctezuma. Mokte who? Moctezuma? Leader of the Mexica and all-around douchebag? He runs everything around here. And you don't like them? Oh, please. They force my empire into submission. The taxes and tribute they demand is ridiculous. And he makes us hang our toilet paper under rather than over, which just ain't right. Ah, uh, but what if you have a cat? <laughs> well, that's your first mistake right there. Now, if someone was to knock him off his temple, they'd find us Totonox most grateful. Ah, oh, crap, here come his lackeys. Men from the East, we are emissaries from His Holiness, His Worshipfulness, the Mexico ruler Moctezuma. Your presence here is allowed, but His Awesomeness Moctezuma insists that you travel no further. Well, I must insist on meeting with your most excellent ruler. 
Not for me, of course, but on behalf of my king, Charles V. See, if I don't, it'll be a whole thing when I get back. You're really putting my balls in a vice right now. Moctezuma anticipated this, and as a consolation, he has granted you this bounty. Heavenly boners, that's a lot of gold. Oh boy, guys, see, what you don't get about us, we Spaniards know a sickness of the heart that only gold can cure. We also have syphilis. You got anything for that? Yes, Cortez might be a master tactician and beloved by his men, but I can be that too. Plus, I have like three times his forces. This can't possibly go tits up. Captain Narvaez, the natives have greeted us with gold. How should we split it up amongst the men? We? <laughs> you got a mouse in your pocket? As captain, that gold's mine. Now, I need to take a little nap. What should we do? <laughs> I don't know. Drink the water? When Panfilo arrived in 1520, he had no idea what had transpired in the Mexica capital of Tenochtitlan the previous November. Oh my, this city is amazing. It's larger than anything in Europe. The engineering of the causeways, the temples. Holy sh! the McDonald's even have working ice cream machines. Spaniards, halt. Are you Moctezuma? Yes. Now, why have you entered Tenochtitlan? You know, when I especially asked you not to, I mean, dude, I gave you like a magic bottle of gold to stay away. Yes, but it would be rude not to return the dish. Here, have some flan. And while you're at it, please pledge fealty to the one true king, Charles V. Huh? Why would I do that? Because you think we're gods, right? <laughs> These guys are hilarious. You think I think you're gods? Yes, well... I mean, what do you think that is? A guy on an animal. I can see his feet. But don't I look like one of your gods returning from the east? Who? Quetzalcoatl? Yeah, <laughs> spitting image. Listen, I know you've been conversing with some of the more dissatisfied people of my empire. I get it. But since you're here already and that kind of look like a big pass if I lock you out, why don't you stick around and maybe we can talk about some kind of alliance? And maybe instead of sacrificing people atop the temple, you can put up a portrait of the Virgin Mary? <laughs> This guy, this guy! Moctezuma set up Cortez and his men in his deceased father's palace. Over the course of the next few months, the two sides tried to suss each other out. There's just so much gold. Is that all you guys think about? You act like it's useful for anything other than jewelry and statues. You should pine over real value, like cocoa. Leaves and beans? Of what value are they? You know what? You're right. I'll drink my hot chocolate and you drink your hot gold and we'll see who's smiling. Your worshipfulness, a package from Qualpopoca in the east has arrived and uh, you better take a look at it. What is it? Oh, jeez. Moctezuma, what's in the box? Okay, don't freak out. What's in the box? Dude, that's my guy's head. I know, dude, and it looks bad, but hear me out. Yes, I had sent my soldiers to kill your Spaniards, but that was before I met you. We can still be pros, right? Cortez took Moctezuma hostage, but still left him in charge, which seems kind of odd considering he was in the heart of the Mexica Empire. But one must understand that Moctezuma himself was seen as a God to his people. Cortez, knowing this perception gave Moctezuma his value, allowed him to continue to rule as a puppet. And Moctezuma, knowing that showing weakness might inspire rebellion, went along with it. It's even recounted that Moctezuma played board games with his captors to pass the time. J10? Uh, you sunk my caravel. Um, excuse me, but I thought this video was about how awesome I was. Not quite, but this is where Narvaez re-enters the story. Cortez received word that Narvaez had landed on the orders of Velazquez. He decided to take care of him himself, but needed to leave someone in charge back in Tonochtitlan. Alvarado, there will be a substantial reward for keeping the peace here. You are free to use any methods necessary, but I want them alive. No disintegrations. As you wish. You're leaving that guy in charge? He looks like he would drop kick a baby. Narvaez, with roughly thrice the soldiers as Cortez, quickly made his way north along the coast towards Tenochtitlan, making camp at the native city of Sempoala. Hello, savages! We are on our way to arrest Hernan Cortez. Will you help us on our noble quest? 
Why does he think we understand what he's saying? He's speaking Spanish and we're speaking Nuatl. Yeah, he's confused. This whole video's been fast and loose with language barriers. Senor Narvaez, I come on behalf of Captain General Cortez. He is on his way and is wondering if perhaps an amicable arrangement can be reached that would satisfy both you and your men. No dice. I will control all of this once I have Cortez in chains and my men lust not for your disgraceful bribes, but rather are solely content by being under my command. Of course, that is plain to see. They clearly live to heed your command. Might I see you parade your men to display just how obedient they are to your orders? You heard the envoy. Parade will now advance. Very impressive. Almost as fast a pace as Senor Cortez can do. Almost. Double time, hombres! And thus Nervais was tricked into parading his men into near exhaustion. Four hours later. Oh, I also taught them how to do the thriller dance. Would you like to see that too? That won't be necessary. I best be going. The hour is late and besides, it looks like it's gonna rain. Well, boys, I believe we made quite an intimidating impression. I doubt that dog Cortez will have the cojones to show his face. Huh. Uh, Senor Cortez, so we finally meet. I served under you in Cuba, you moron. Irregardless, by the authority of Governor Velasquez, I am placing you under arrest. Really? You and what army? Um, my army of like a thousand guys? You mean the thousand that have already defected to my side on the promise of untold riches? Wait, what? Oh, you jerks. How could this day get any worse? <laughs> Cortez had Narvaez imprisoned at the garrison of Veracruz for the next two years. Nobody knows the trouble I seen. Nobody knows my sorrow. All right, Narvaez, it's time. Cortez? I'm sending you back to España. You're no longer a threat now that the conquest of the Mexica is over. Really? You conquered their empire? How? Well, after I defeated and arrested you, I returned to Tenochtitlan to find it in utter chaos. Moctezuma, what the hell is going on here? Hey, don't blame me. Everything was going fine until this psycho went on a rampage mission. They were getting ready to ambush us. We were celebrating the Feast of Toxcatl. God damn it. Why do white people always lose their mind whenever indigenous people start dancing in circles? Moctezuma, talk to your people. Uh, I don't think my people are going to listen to me. Why don't we try sending my brother out to calm them? Fine, whatever. Okay, he's talking to the people. And now he's the leader of the resistance. Moctezuma, do something! Okay, guys, I hear you. I know. These Spaniards, right? But they're not so bad. Dude, not cool. I'm still the emperor. You do not throw rocks at me. Whoa, do that one more time and... Ugh. So, we gotta get out of here. Under a barrage, we left the city. Barely 400 of us made it out alive. Turn on. This is pretty bad. Oh, you think? We're down to a handful of guys deep in enemy territory, completely surrounded. Death is surely around the corner. Hey, guys. La Vaca, are you here for us? You would think, right? Nah, I'm just here with my buddy Smallpox. Turns out he stowed away on one of Narvaez's ships, and uh, I'm gonna show him around town. Within a few months, 40% of the Mexica were dead from disease. Apparently brought over by the African slave Francisco Oiga, a member of your expedition. Great, I'm the one black guy named in this video, and I get blamed for spreading a plague. So in a way, I brought down the Mexica. I'm a good conquistador. No, you're an idiot. You're not even good enough to have imposter syndrome. You're greedy and vain, and not in the good ways. How do you expect your men to look up to you? Well, how else can they look up to me unless I let them down? <laughs> Go home, Panvilio. You are not a serious person. Leave the conquering to the real conquistadors. Fine. Just let me pack up my toilet wine. Toilet wine? Well, yeah, I've been locked in here for two years. How else am I gonna get wine? You want some? Uh, I guess. 
This tastes like this. Well, of course it does. You see any grapes? There goes the worst conquistador I have ever met. His ineptitude and incompetence will surely lead to his name being forgotten in history. Unless... Unless... Unless he is dumb enough to return. <laughs> hey, have you ever noticed that sunsets in the New World produce four shadows? Nice! I'm getting a part two! Sweet summer's child, Panfilio, waiting for the sequel that will never come! Um, Drone of History is already animating it. What? And I get my second video? Impossible! I am Well, while we wait, we could subscribe or check out one of these videos here. Or support the channel and earn sweet perks by becoming a patron on Patreon. Should we tell him the War of 1812 got three videos? Uh, no. I haven't been done like this since Bathinia.